I think this is the most recent textbook. And uh, by the way, if I'm ever sharing something or if I think I'm sharing something and your screen is not showing what I think it is or doesn't match what I'm saying, you should say something because it's totally possible that internet slowed down or I forgot to share or something went wrong. Okay, I assume you've been to a grocery store and you've purchased something. So I hope that this connects with you in some way. This is um, sparkling water, could be beer, could be soda, whatever. Um, you buy something in a package and you have choices generally because you could buy a larger package or you could buy a smaller package. And the smaller package is probably cheaper and the larger package is probably more expensive. And often you might ask yourself, well, what's a better deal for me? Now, a lot of times in the grocery store, they will do the math for you and they will report this number that you see at the bottom. So the kind of opening point for this chapter is, you know, how was that number determined? Now, the book tends to put things that are definitions or important in these little boxes with uh, shading behind them. One of the things that you as a student should be thinking about is, what am I writing down here? Now, you have a textbook. You are not going to sell this textbook later. So please write stuff in your textbook. That is an important place for you to do stuff. Um, but you may also have a notebook. And I, you should have a notebook because a lot of times when we open class, I'm going to put some problems up in an announcement and say, I want you to work on this. And then we'll all kind of roll into class and start working on these problems. Those aren't from the book. They're just problems that I make up that are kind of relevant for practicing for the quiz or the test or just checking on your understanding. So you want a place to be organized where you're doing work that's separate from your textbook. Um, and in that place, it's an important question as a student to think about, am I writing stuff like this down? A ratio is a comparison of the relative size of two quantities. I have opinions about what you write down and what you shouldn't write down, but more importantly, you need to be thinking about that because you need to be thinking about yourself as a student. Okay, here we go. Where did 0 0.56 come from? Well, this is actually telling us where it came from. If you take 9.99 and you divide it by 18, it should give you 0 0.56. So that's what I want you to do. The first math I want you to do in class, I want you to take 999 and I want you to divide it by 18. And I want you to take 1250 and I want you to divide it by 24. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down over here. You don't have to say the answer out loud, just go ahead and do the calculations. came up as a decimal so 0 0.555 0 0.555 they, yep exactly yeah so they run yep now you're headed into the thinking about what they got and what you got and whether they're the same thing what was 12.5 mm -hmm. divided by 24 25 dude and I hope you saw the extra stuff at the end of that, right? It wasn't exactly 0.52, it was 0 0.52083333. Yeah. So this brings up rounding. It should bring mm -hmm. up rounding, right? Because, and, and rounding is one of those topics that we kind of gloss over at the beginning, but it's actually a really significant part of the course. So let me just say a couple things about rounding. First of all, Um, we use basic rounding rules. So what I mean by that is one, two, three, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four is on one side and five, six, seven, eight, nine is on the other. And if you need help with rounding, nothing to be ashamed of. It's just let, let's meet up and let's talk about it because it's going to be a problem for you if you're struggling with rounding because it happens so much in the course. So let's get it nailed down early um, so we can not worry about that. The thing I'd say about rounding is context matters. So um, 
in this situation, there were no instructions about the rounding, but this number ended up as 0 0.56 and this near number ended up as 0 0.52. And I would argue that it's context that has made that decision. What about the context tells me to round to this specific place? And what I mean by context is this is the situation we're talking about. Sparkling water, What is it about the context that tells me that's where I should round? Any ideas? It, well, it says right there on the page, it says uh, uh, 56 right here. This one. Where it says count right below the 999. Yeah. Yes. So that's when, mm -hmm. But they did, but that, my point is, why didn't they say 0 0.555? That would have been more accurate, right? There's no instructions here mm -hmm. about rounding, so why 0 0.56? What is it about the context? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, there is no 0 0.555. I wouldn't understand what that was if I was in the store. Mm -hmm. So, yes, so I mean, I would. Context means um, what's happening, right? Where are we? And in math, specifically, when I say context, I mean what are the units or the words that are around the numbers? So, in this specific example, the important contextual clue is that this is about money, right? We're talking about spending money. And when we talk about spending money, this number makes less sense than this number. The, the dollar means we should round to two decimal places because that's how we talk about money. Now, there's some exceptions to that. The gas station, they actually go to three decimal places, which is weird. Um, I've got some theories about why that is. Uh, sometimes we probably would not have any decimal places because we just would want to know how many dollars it is. And we really care about whether it's 99 cents or 87 cents. But in general, if it's money, we can go to two decimal places because that's, you know, when it stops making sense because the last unit we can work with is a penny. So that's what I mean by context matters. There's other situations where you know, it's going to be a whole number because you can't have a part of something, right? If I'm calculating something about people or dogs or stores, then it doesn't make sense to say 0.7 people or 0.2 dogs or 0.35 stores. There's no, there's no, there's no in between. It's a zero or a one. Okay. Um, I would also say that you should look for instructions because sometimes you'll have instructions. They may use place value like thousands. They may use decimal places like two decimal places. So it's possible that there are instructions about the expectations of rounding. And the last thing I'd say about rounding is kind of a higher level point, which is having more information makes it harder to talk about something. <clears throat> and this is <clears throat> less of a point for, you know, how to succeed in this class and more of like a real talk point about numbers in the world. Let me give you an example. If Chicago Public Schools has a budget of uh, $4,387,765,891.47, what number did I just say? Do you remember anything about the number that I just said? I mean, come on, I just said it five seconds ago. You already forgot? Why did you forget the number? All I heard was one million. <laughs> so I'm, I don't, all I heard was a one million after that. Yeah. Well, actually, the first number. And something sense. The first, yeah, something sense. That's true. 
the first number I said was four billion. And to be quite honest, I made the number up and I don't remember what I said after that either. So I'm just gonna say <laughs> this was the number. I do remember it was 47 cents. <clears throat> now, this is one number, but it's not one piece of information. Look at how many pieces of information there are. One, two, three, four, 12 pieces of information. Because each place value is itself a piece of information, right? 4 billion, 800 million, 70 million, 5 million, 400,000, 30,000, 7,000. The more information I provide you, the harder it is for your brain to capture it and think about it. This is not a good way to talk about the budget of Chicago. It's a made up number. I don't know what the actual budget for the public schools of Chicago is, but in a newspaper, you would probably hear this, 4.9 billion. Because they're trying to make it something that's not overwhelming, but is relatively accurate for you know, what we're talking about. It's, it's $4.9 billion, right? It's like the, uh, the deficit of the United States, which is in the trillions. 19 trillion, 20 trillion, that's when people talk about the, the, the debt, sorry, not the deficit, they would say that is the way of talking about it. Now that obscures a lot of information, but it's a better way to talk about it. So it's just a general point about rounding. It's one of the reasons we round. And I encourage you and, and want to empower you to round because one of the things that students tend to do is they take something like two divided by 17, Sorry, 11, no, I can't do that. 13 divided by 17, and they calculate it, and then they tell me, oh, it's 0 0.76470059, because it feels like it's more accurate, it's more precise to say that. But I wanna empower you to round. Like, you don't have to tell me all of those digits. It's okay to say 0 0.76, it's okay to say 0 0.765. It might be okay just to say 0 0.8. I want you to feel like you can round. It's not about getting as much information on the page as possible. And off, often, the more information you write down, the harder it is for you to comprehend what you're talking about. So do yourself a favor and do some rounding. Okay, any questions about that? If you have problems with rounding, like I said, let me know. We can talk about how we get from here to here, how we get from here to here. Once we make the decision about rounding to the hundredths place, then there's the mechanics of doing it. Okay. Um, put a star next to this table at the bottom of page 12. I want you to find the video. It's actually recommended in the announcement that you do this one, but I want you to do this one. I want you to use the video to try to help you just to get an introduction to how she operates and how she explains things. and. This is a, an important problem, uh, generally shows up, one of the problems on the test generally looks like something like this. Okay, now let's work on the next step, okay? The first step was just making a ratio into a fraction and then turning it into a decimal. And just to give you an example that's not in the book, what I mean is if I say, I have eight cats and three dogs, what is the ratio of dogs to cats? This is where we're starting. We just want to be able to build a ratio and I want to turn it into a decimal. To turn it into a decimal, all we have to do is to divide because once we set up that fraction, we acknowledge that a fraction bar just is a fancy way of saying division then we go from there. So what's the ratio as a fraction going to look like in this situation? Would it be three over eight? Okay, very good. I tried to trick you, but you got it. Yep, and you're welcome to say three over eight because three over eight is a simplified way of kind of saying it. We're taking out the words. The words do matter, and we'll get back to that in a second. But to do the math, all we really need to focus on is the three and the eight. Now, I wrote it like this. I gave you this problem just to highlight a very important thing about ratios. The order matters. So when I say 
the ratio of dogs to cats, that's what you need to pay attention to. It's not how I gave you the information in the first place. It's how I asked for the uh, answer, okay? Sometimes that's a little curveball that you get thrown in a quiz or a test. You do need to pay attention to the ratio question, not how the information is presented, all right? All right, what's the next step? Turn it into a decimal. You just divide three over eight. Yep, three divided by and eight. You get 0 0.375. Perfect, all right. So this highlights the first two skills. Construct a ratio, which just means make it a fraction, and calculate a ratio which just means make it a decimal. Okay. Oh, it's going. All right. Now let's move into the third part. So we'll go back to the book here. This is the bot. This is uh, page thirteen. I want to look at number six in particular. Now I'm going to give you a minute or two to work on this. I don't really want you to focus on this part of the fraction question, so I'm going to highlight it to try to block it out. Um. I'm interested in A and I'm interested in B, the fraction and the decimal. Just doing what we just did. We're headed towards C, which is trying to say what it means. And this is a great intro question because it, it tends to be challenging. Okay, I'll give you a minute or two to work on that. Don't say anything out loud, just let everybody have a chance to work on it. Ready? So would the fraction be a 10? You're yeah. ready. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so go for it. Yeah. So it um so would it be ten dollars and fifty cents over twelve dollars, and it would come out to zero point eight seven five. All right. So that would be hold on. a. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So, yeah, the first part, you're just reading the information that's given to you. Right, Jane makes this much an hour, Lee makes this much an hour, and it asks you to make a ratio of what she earns to what he earns. So it gave it to you in the exact order that it wanted you to set it up in, no problem. And then turn it into a decimal, we're just gonna divide, boom. So that's A and B. Any questions about that part? Okay, so um, we may care to do some rounding here because this is about money. So again, that the context is kind of telling us we could make this 0 0.88, but it doesn't say anything specifically about rounding. So it's not wrong if you, you didn't do it. It just kind of hints at the context part because it says what would be an appropriate place to round the answer. Now, let me give you my kind of scaffolding for how to interpret a ratio. And you can write this down, take a picture, however you wanna do it. But this is important because this skill is going to be a skill that goes all the way through the course in terms of, you know, um, starting here in the ratio section and then as we go, we'll use ratios over and over again and um, it'll just keep coming up over and over. So I definitely recommend that you write down the ideas here about how you turn uh, a ratio into a sentence. So we're on step three. Take your 0.875 and do what with it? Put a one underneath. Good, make it a fraction and we can make it a fraction by putting one underneath. Okay, so logically the, the math behind this is if I divide by one, I get the same number. So if I put something over one, I'm just saying divide by one and it hasn't changed the number at all. But the advantage is that I can go to step four, which is extend my fraction bar and put numbers and words, sorry, words into the right side of this. And that's gonna help me make my sentence. So what are the words that you would attach to the top? Now, notice that 
it's nice that I wrote down some of my process here because I can go back and look at this fraction and this fraction should help me see what the words are that are connected to this. Because if I go back to the problem, I can see the 1050, but I see the 1050 with words around it and that helps me get the words into the fraction. So what are the words that go into the fraction with the 0.875 and the one? Now, this is a hard part. So if you're I'm not hearing a lot of feedback, so that's, it's okay. You're, you're kind of struggling to, to put it together. Jane makes 1050 an hour. So how would I describe the top number? I would say what Jane makes an hour. Okay, I put a lot of words in there, but the point is, that it's better to put more words than fewer words because it's more descriptive. What's the bottom number gonna be? I mean, what are the words that go with the bottom number one? Uh, would it be what Lee makes per hour? Good. Or one. Yep. Again, these numbers are really important to help me get these words in the right place because by the time I've done the division, these numbers obscure what I'm talking about. If there's no 0 0.875 or one in the problem. So it's like, I don't know what those numbers are, but if you've written it down, it helps you make the connection. The top number is what Jane makes per hour, the bottom number is what Lee makes per hour. And now I'm ready to make my sentence. For every blah, there are blah. Now, just before we do that, before I give you a chance to do that, my point about putting more words instead of less words is that if I say Jane and Lee, this is a harder sentence to write than if I say more words. Because Jane, there's lots of things that describe Jane. How old is she? How much hair does she have? How many days did she work last week? How much TV does she watch on the weekends? Right? Same goes for Lee. But we're not talking about a bunch of random things about Jane and Lee. We're talking about what they make per hour. All right. So now we're ready to make a sentence. What do you got? Um, for every, um, is it just a random or we're using the problem? Well, we're trying and to, for every eight hours, there is a, we're trying to describe what the ratio means. This is part C. We're trying to write a meaningful sentence and we're using these numbers, the 8.875 and the one, and remember you can round the 0.875 if it helps make this make more sense. And we're using these words to try to put it together. What is the sentence gonna say? For every 88 cents Jane makes, there are a dollar that Lee makes. What do you guys think about that? Well, it's good. That's what I think about it. I think we could say it in a way that sounds more natural, like um, Jane makes 88 cents for every one dollar Lee makes. But it doesn't, I'm not judging you on how pretty your sentence is. The point of having a template is that you have a structure that you can kind of stick things into. And if you want to go from there and try to restate it, you can. If you don't, that's fine too. It's true that Lee makes more than Jane 
but that's not how we're going to construct the sentence. And a lot of times people kind of get flummoxed on that. Like, Lee makes 12 cents more than Jane. Eh, you know, let's stick with the numbers that we've got. We've got 0.875, which we round to 0.88, and we've got one. So we're going to use those in our sentence for every blah, there's blah. Now, there's a nice opportunity to connect to the world that we live in. There is a systemic injustice happening here in our society where women tend to get paid less than men. And I'm not talking about comparing, you know, teachers to doctors. I'm talking about comparing people who do the same work. The sociologists go out and they study people and how much they make. They discover that, in fact, there is a gender wage gap. And, you know, some of that is... is attributable to choices that people make in their lifetime, but some of it is just the messed up society that we live in. It's not fair that people do the same work and get paid less for doing the same work. What do we do about it? I don't know. But we can't do anything if we don't see the problem first. And it's just a nice example of everything that is going to go on in this course, right? We're talking about uh, the cheeseburger of mathematics, so the cheeseburger of quantitative reasoning, there were these words. Now, typically in a real problem, you wouldn't get A and B. It would go right to C where, okay, make a sentence out of that, right? So you got to fill in the blanks about what you have to do. That's the interpret part. Then you do the math. The math was really a short part of this. It was the division. I had to divide this number by this number and, and do some rounding. And then the final bottom part of the cheeseburger was saying what it means. Now, let's practice. Because to me, the most valuable thing we can do here is not sit and hear me talk about how to do stuff, but to give you a chance to practice, ask questions, get feedback. Now, what I would recommend here, I want you to do one and two. Um, this is at the bottom of page 14. If, if you can send me a picture of your work, text, you know, take a picture, text it to me, then that gives me an opportunity to give you some feedback. And that would be very helpful to me in terms of seeing where you are and giving you either, a, you know, pat on the back, going in the right direction or some corrective feedback. So I'm going to put myself on mute here for a while, maybe five, 10 minutes. And I want you to do one and two. When you finish one, take a picture, send it to me. If you have a question, just shout it out. Okay, let's talk. Got a couple pictures. Whoop, I got three. Yay. Some of you look like you were waiting to do the whole thing before you sent me anything. I can't tell you how uh, how important it is to me to see your work. It's a big, big problem um, that I'm missing in this format, being able to walk around and, and you know, keep, keep track of what people understand. So, um, you know, it's, it's very important. Some, some of you, I think, put your names on there and some of you didn't. Just, uh, it's helpful if you put your name in there somewhere so that later I can search. Uh, if I'm trying to get a hold of you, I can search for your name and then uh, send you a text that way. It's easier. Okay, cool. Um, the, the first one, 780 over 240, um, turns out to be 3.25. And some of you wrote sentences uh, that rounded and some of you didn't. And there's not a right answer here. So let me write down a couple of things I got. For every three pieces of chicken, one person. That was one thing I got. Uh, there's another one. Our 3.25 pieces of chicken for every one guest. Okay, and for every one person, 
three. Okay. This is beautiful because all three of these answers rounded differently. <clears throat> Were there any instructions about how to round in the problem? No. So that means you're free to do it however you want. And we can argue and debate you know, which one of these is the best way to answer the question. Um, I'm happy with all of them. They're great. Yeah, I have a hard time imagining how we're going to cut up these pieces of chicken into little bits. So I might, in reality, you know, we have three per person and there should be some left over. That's how it would really go down, right? But if you want to get technical, 3.25 pieces of chicken. I'm going to take that chicken wing and I'm going to cut it into fourths. All right, this next question I like because it brings up an important point about word numbers or number words. So it says something like 6.6 .6 million Hoosiers and then uh, 35,826 square miles. And I think that's the way that it asks for the ratio, 6.6 .6 million people. So if you did 6.6 .6 divided by 35,826, you get this number. And this number is wrong. What is wrong with what I did? I thought I just needed to take the top and divide it by the bottom. That's what I did, and I got it wrong. When you did it, you didn't put in the full 6.6 .6 million. Right. You put in just 6.6. 6. Right. It's not 6.6 mm -hmm. .6 people. It's 6.6 .6 million people. Million, billion, thousand, hundred. These are words which carry numeric content. And we can't ignore that if we want to do a calculation. There are times when it turns out it doesn't make any difference if we ignore it or not, because maybe the top number and the bottom number both have the same number unit and so it you know they cancel each other out but this situation definitely makes a big difference i don't want this number i want six million six hundred thousand divided by thirty five eight twenty six right the digits are the same but the place value is different and it makes a big difference my answer originally i hope made no sense right that's like not even one person per square mile. And there's more people in Indiana than there are square miles. Now, your point, Erica, about rounding is good because as we get to interpret it, we gotta think about how are we gonna say this? Are we gonna talk about 0.2 of a person or are we going to do something that's a little different? So um, let me just choose one that I got here for every square mile, there are 184.2 Hoosiers. Perfect, right? Now, again, the context might mean I would consider rounding that to hundred and eighty four Hoosiers, but I'm not going to count the first sentence wrong unless it specifically said something about it, okay? Now, I might count it wrong if the question was not communicate the ratio in a sentence, but how many people would we expect to find in a square mile? Because if I'm asking how many people, then that's a point where I do want you to acknowledge that the thing we're talking about should not come in parts. I'm not expecting to find 0.2 of a person in the square mile, right? And that's a subtle difference between where I would accept not rounding versus where I would want you to round. Okay, so the next part I want to think about is part to part, part to whole. So again, this is the book, you got the bold boxes, you got the shading, it's telling you to think about, you know, this, um, definitions here you got to decide am i writing this down am i not writing this down go ahead and read it take a second to kind of think about what it's saying this is a relatively 
simple concept, but it can be challenging to apply it. Okay, so the thing I would highlight is this uh, bottom part in the part to hold, this note about part to whole ratios can be expressed as percentages. That's how this distinction is most, is gonna come up most. We talk about ratios and we'll use ratios a lot. And as we think about, hey, can this be a percentage or not? That has implications for my interpretation. It has implications for how I communicate the answer. So that's a really important point. To practice that, let's do the bottom question. Okay, so again, great quantitative reasoning question. You've got the words up front. You've got a couple of tasks. You do have some instructions about rounding. And in that second part, that's where you're gonna run into this question about, hmm, can I turn this into a percentage? And I encourage you to refer to the top of the page to think about whether the answer to that is yes or no. First of all, the, the order that they gave it to me is again the order that they're asking it for. Don't be lured into a false sense of security here. You are gonna get questions where the order they give it to you is not the same as the order. So you really wanna keep focusing on this part, ratio of North Koreans to South Koreans. So this is 25 million to 51 million. This is an example of where it doesn't matter if I pay attention to the million or not, because it just so happens that if I cancel it out, it's gonna be 25 over 51, right? And that's just because 25 with six zeros after it is the same as 51, six zeros over it. It's the same as this 25 to uh, 51. So all three of these are the same. This is the easiest thing to type into your calculator, so you should do 25 divided by 51. When you do 25 divided by 51, you get a long decimal, and they gave you instructions about rounding, so what would you report the answer as here? Okay, not a lot of answers here. Maybe the place value is confusing. Um, in general, the way it works is if I have 0. Hmm. I don't know if it's going to let me do that or not. Point one, two, three. So you've got the point, then you've got the tenths, then you've got the hundredths, then you've got the thousandths. So that's the name of the place value for one, two, three in this decimal. So when it says round of the thousands, that means go to three decimal places. And when you look at the third decimal place to decide whether that's gonna be a zero or a one, you have to decide what, you have to look at the next number. The next number is a one, we round down. This answer would be 0 0.490. Now, when I say 0 0.490, it's exactly the same as 0.49. So either of those answers is good on paper if, you, if that's what you wrote down. Okay. So the first question was, make the ratio, turn it into a decimal. And again, that's our kind of our first two bread and butter skills. Make a ratio, turn it into a decimal. Now, the second question is about, can it be a percentage? And I don't want to just hear you say yes or no. This, it says explicitly to explain your reasoning, but you should get used to that. Can it be turned into a percentage? Why or why not? What's your opinion about that? Um, I think not. Okay. And why? Because it doesn't uh, tell you too much information. They're just uh, saying people, I would want to know if their people are redheaded. 25 million Koreans have red hair versus 30 people in South Korea have black hair. And then you could put them together and see, I mean, I would need a little bit more information. Okay. A little, like, yeah. Uh, She's saying no and saying, I'd like more information about this situation. Jordan? I Thomas, say yes. Thomas says yes. Okay. Why? Uh, I say yes because uh, um, Korea as a whole, 49% of the population is South Koreans. 
and the rest of you no, forty nine percent of the population is North Korean, and the rest is South Korean. Okay. So there's a part of this problem which is challenging just because there's some expectations about understanding North Korea and South Korea geopolitically to make sense of this. Here's what I have to say about the part to part. Well, first of all, you should be digging into this question, right? Which one do we need it to be in order to be a percentage? If we're going to make it a percentage, it needs to be which type? Part to part or part to whole? Part to whole. Part to whole. If we want to make it a percentage, it's got to be part to whole. So then the question becomes, is it part to whole, right? That's really the question you need to be asking yourself. Is it part to whole? And a better way I think of asking that question is, is the top number a part of the bottom number? Now, here's what you need to know about Korea. Korea used to be one country. There was a war in the 50s called the Korean War. And in that, Korea was partitioned into two countries. There's South Korea and there's North Korea. North Korea is a communist state with a crazy dictator. And I apologize if you're a big Kim Jong-un fan. And South Korea is a democratic state um, that has a lot more people in it and is a lot more prosperous by most measures. Um, so they're two separate countries, right? And if I were saying something less confusing, like not comparing two different Koreas, but like comparing Canada to the United States, is the, are the people in Canada part of the people in the United States? Are the people in Canada part of the people in the United States? Are they a part of our country? Oh. No, they're not a part of our country. Good. That was meant to be a, a, an easy one, right? If I'm talking about the people in Indiana, are they a part of the United States? Yeah, they are, right? That's what I mean by is the top number a part of the bottom number? So because these are two separate countries, this turns out to be a part-to-part -part ratio. And if it's part-to-part, -part, it's not part-to-whole. It's not a percentage. So this is not 49%. Now there is a convoluted way we can make 49% work in terms of this, but for our purposes in this class, we're gonna stick with, if we can make it a percentage because it's part to whole, then we can communicate it as a percentage. But if not, we're gonna communicate it in the way that we just practiced, which is for every blah, there are blah. Okay, so the answer to the question B would be no, it is not a part, it is, it, it, cannot be expressed as a percentage because it is not part of Typically, when you're answering stuff, you want to be careful about your it. So I just fell into that habit because I was talking about it. But really what I'm saying is, no, the ratio cannot be expressed as a percentage because it's not part of whole. So as we go to interpret it, then we're back to our skills in the make a ratio into a sentence. So go ahead and try to finish that. Would you make it into a fraction? Perfect, 0.49 over one, good. Okay, then what? And then when did you make this into well, there's one step before we get to the sentence. Get the words into the fraction as a way of helping you write the sentence. And maybe you were kind of doing that mentally, but I, I encourage you to write it down. So what is the top number and what is the bottom number? Top number is North Korea and the bottom number is South Korea. Yeah, and I would, again, trying to get more words in is better. We we're talking about North Korean people, and we're talking about South Korean people. 
right? Because there's lots of things we could talk about in terms of North Korea and South Korea, but we're talking about how many people they have. All right, so what's your sentence? For every blah, there are blah. For every one South Korean, there is... For every Korean... There is what? There is a zero, uh, well, 49th Korean? Yeah, now this, is the... this, if this is kind of hurting your brain, right, that's a reflection of the, mm -hmm. the challenge here. But let's just write it out the way it is, 0.49 North Koreans, right? Again, in a ratio context, I don't really have a problem with you saying something like this, right? I'm not saying it's the best way to say it, but I don't have a problem if this is what you come up with, because this is an accurate representation of what we're saying. But this brings up the point that came up in the earlier question, and I kind of said, let's skip that. If we have a decimal, in a fraction, we can get rid of the decimal by multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number. So for instance, if I chose to multiply here by 100, the top and the bottom, then I get a new ratio, a new fraction, and I don't have any decimals. So it's gonna sound better when I say it. What's 0. 0.49 times 100? 49. 49, uh huh. And what is one times 100? 100. Yep. So this would be the same. I can use these numbers instead of my 0.49 and my 1, and it's the same ratio because 49 divided by 100 is 0.49. So it would be sound better probably to say for every 100 South Koreans, there are 50 North Koreans. Sorry. 50. Where did I get 50 from? 49. Now, if I rounded, I could make it an even easier sentence. I could say for every uh, two South Koreans, there is one North Korean. There's lots of ways that I can communicate it. And if I were writing, if I was a journalist, I would have to make decisions about what's the best way to communicate that. 